If we're talking about squeegee performance, it's very important that the rear squeegee blade always be making contact with the ground with a square edge. The square edge is what really scrapes the water along. And when you couple that with just a moderate amount of deflection, not mashed all the way down, not standing up and just kind of fluttering on edge, a little bit of deflection flat across the arc and a square edge is really going to pull trash and water along keep good suction and vacuum up to the recovery hose that creates your lift up into the tank as a squeegee wears you may notice edge wear rounding or flattening of the blade this is a blade that wasn't flipped. It has square edge here, but this edge has some significant rounding. This is its partner. This has been flipped. If you notice this fourth edge, still really square. This edge has been scraped. That edge has been scraped and that edge has been scraped. If you look at it on the end, you can see it looks almost triangular on the edges. Another defect, bits and pieces of trash that get caught and will let streams of water through. So if you notice that you have good water lift, you don't have puddles of water flowing out the sides of the squeegees, Water's not spilling out the side when you turn left or right, but there's continual streaks or streams in odd positions, not on both outsides, right down the middle. That would be your squeegee tilt, but just little bitty streams and streaks and such. An easy thing to do as you're scrubbing along, turn this machine on. Gonna do a quick return to home. I had it in the down position a minute ago. So we're gonna engage squeegee. You're driving along, the squeegee's down. You're just gonna pop this squeegee button for a half a second and then right back down again. So you're literally just gonna go right here to the fan, off, on. Off, on. And what that does, the little half second of off lifts the squeegee up in the air. And as you're driving along, lets any trash fall out. You'll find that most trash, the vacuum's strong enough to pick it up and get it into the tank. But there are some larger or odd shaped things that will drag under that rubber and as they drag and push their way out through it, it has enough pressure to pull it along, but it may slip under the rubber. It can leave little streaks and streams of water and leave a little bit of a less desirable effect of cleanliness on the floor. So always keep an eye out that your rubbers aren't rounded. You're flipping them to always have a square edge. You don't have any extreme wear that's allowing extra air to flow into the system. And if you have any rounding on your squeegee rubber, make sure you flip it. You have four flips and then you can replace it. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the Tenant T7 Rider, that the vac motor is running properly, but there's weak or no suction with no errors on the air indicator such as a flashing light on the trouble code or a full water tank. Machine's very simple. It's got a squeegee on the back. Squeegee has two flaps of rubber. Front rubber has notches in it, lets water in. Rear rubber squeegees that water along. Vacuum hose connects to the top of the squeegee. Pulls that water 
up into the recovery tank. The vac motor is located inside the housing on top of the recovery tank. There's a small gasket around the vac motor inlet that's only to keep trash from entering into the vac motor. This filter, likewise, stops any kind of floating debris or any early dust as you start vacuuming uh, before water's in the path. Any of that sort of thing from being sucked up into the vac motor it has several lightweight impellers that can be thrown off balance, bearings that could be damaged as it takes on trash. So you definitely want this filter to be in place. It's a pretty robust filter. It's only about $4 to change it. Uh, the biggest defect you'll see in these is if they get saturated, a saturation of water can limit the amount of airflow. If they get aged, really funky smelling, or uh, just a major amount of debris on them, you can change those out pretty cheaply. This outer gasket is far more important. This is really where the upper part of the assembly forms its air seal to the lower part of the tank. You can even see a little bit of that gasket line on the tank. There's a little bit of air input right there. It needs just a little bit of air draw just so you don't collapse the tank in. This seal, if these tabs get bent out of place, very rarely, but this seal can actually miss the edge of the plastic to the inside and it can suck air right there. So you do want to make sure that the seal is intact. It's not come unglued, it's not broken, torn, and that when this is in the down position, that it's not sucking air around the edge of the seal. And you can easily tell that by lifting up on it. If the vacuum is on and you can lift up on this, you're not getting good suction. Uh, there should be a fairly firm seal of that. Next place to look at for proper vacuum seal is the drain hose for the dirty water tank, the recovery tank. This cap, if it's dislodged and it's allowing air to flow in, you won't be able to build vacuum inside of the tank to create water lift through the hose. Next up, if that's sealed, your gasket's intact, your filter's not blocked up, you're gonna take the hose out of the top of the recovery tank and place your hand right there over that hole you feel a very strong suction. The suction you feel right there should be roughly the same suction that you feel right here. If there's a good amount of diminishment of the suction between here and here, you know that you're losing air, losing your vacuum at some point. You have good suction there. Go ahead and connect the hose back. Pull it off the squeegee. Same test. Do I have the same suction here as here as up inside the vac motor? If I have good suction here, but I do not at the end of the hose here, then it's very likely that somewhere in that loop, some trash has gotten blocked up. You can usually straighten the hose out, give it a little wiggle, and that trash will fall out. If you do have the same suction here, check down inside the squeegee. It's not uncommon for trash, sticks, big flakes of rusty metal or paper trash to get kind of blocked up in there and stop air from flowing. If you have good suction all the way from the top to the end of the hose, it doesn't have to be overwhelmingly powerful, but it should be fairly strong and it shouldn't drop off as you come down the line. Have a look at your squeegee rubbers. Just loosen those knobs right there. Flip your squeegee over. You want to make sure that this squeegee has a nice square edge. And you have four square edges on the squeegee, so you can flip it, flip it flip it and flip it again. You can get four uses out of a single squeegee rubber. The front rubber is a little less important, but what you are looking for is that there's not a big section torn away, very much as having the cap off the hose would diminish the amount of vacuum, negative pressure. 
The same thing with a big tear in this rubber. This rubber creates a certain amount of vacuum pressure, which is what allows water lift up the hose. If all of that's intact and properly aligned, put that back on. We'll engage our vacuum here. The squeegee is going to lower down to the ground. If you notice right here, this squeegee rubber is not making contact with the ground. It should be down with a small amount of deflection. If it's standing straight up, where it kind of puckers in, it's not deflecting, it's just straight vertical. It's very likely that you're losing air pressure. Show you a quick, easy way to adjust that. We'll turn that back on. We'll let the squeegee go down. We're gonna turn the key off. You have two glide wheels that the plate that the squeegee mounts to rides on. When the squeegee is in operating position, lowered to the ground, and the machine is driven forward, that squeegee should show just a small amount of deflection. If it does not, it may be that these glide wheels are too far down, lifting the squeegee up into the air to where it cannot make contact. In which case you would just loosen the lock nut, thread that up, and then reset the lock nut so that it can't move up and down. If at that point you have the squeegee in the proper position, but it's kind of toes down, butt up in the air, so you have this kind of a singular line right down the middle, but the outsides, the ground is fairly uh, squeegeed and dried, but there's a little strip down the middle. There is an adjustment bolt right there. Let me get a camera on it. His job, job of that bolt is to take that plate from a slightly upward angle and lay it out more flat, which will change the cant or the angle of the ellipsis of the squeegee. So instead of being toes down, butt up, it'll be more neutral, more flat, or you could even drive it towards butt down, toes up. Usually that's gonna be dialed in at the shop. It's kind of a set it and forget it. But if you notice that there's any kind of difference in the alignment of the squeegee, it's not uncommon for the machine to back up into something or be hit. And for that impact to create a misalignment in the drag bar that carries this assembly or bending these tabs or otherwise kind of changing its alignment angle. And that bolt is just the quickest way to dial that out. If you notice that these little mount plates are really distorted, you can use an adjustable wrench and kind of bend them back flat. Uh, if you notice these glide wheels aren't really gliding anymore, they're worn or broken or just flopping around kind of useless, they're only about 10 bucks and they're pretty easily replaced by just removing that lock nut and threading it out. If you ever need squeegee rubbers to replace, uh, factory cost is probably close to 50 bucks for those. Wholesale is about $15. Hoses, the uh, main water lift vacuum hose, retails about 30 bucks. Wholesale is about $15, $10 on that. Uh, and then the drain hose assembly retails around $30 to $50. And wholesale on that again is about $12, $15. So nothing on that's real expensive to service. But if you have any troubles or issues with any of it, get in touch with us. We'll help you get the right parts very easy to change toolless or with just a single tool 
If you have any other problems with suction and you're not finding the answers, give us a call. We're help, happy to help you figure out what's going on.